<laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we're going. boys and girls, welcome back in for our second run as the Book Asylum. This week on the show, we're going to actually take a co-host, Richard Ryan Rose, kick his ass out of his seat, move him over into the hot seat, and then we're going to take Jeff Thompson, who's been acting as director, kicked him out of his little goofy chair, throw his ass in a seat right beside Richard, and we're going to find out today about their upcoming and highly anticipated new releases. But I can't go forward without mentioning that my co-hosts are Angel Ramon, technically still Richard Ryan Rose, and Jeff Thompson. But ladies and gentlemen, one of our own, one of my favorite people in the whole wide world, even if you were to ever read our private chat, you'd think we hated each other. <laughs> Dungeon Dan Ubel had a, hopefully as it's looking now, a minor health issue with a stroke. It might have fixed something we don't know, but I'm on it. so freaking happy that he's sitting right there in front of you, looking back yes. at you, probably with crazy sex slips at this point. But he's got a writing project coming, and I'm starting to think to myself, wait a minute. I've heard of all kinds of excuses to get out of writing a fucking book, but a stroke, Dan, really? Yeah. Gotta do it. Fucking kidding me? <laughs> You know how much time this bought me? I had a a stroke. I can't write, man. Fuck you. Write the damn book. (laughs) (laughs) You got a claw hand. To to make make sure we're going to be administering electroshock treatment in the middle of the show. Yay. (laughs) Looking forward to that. Me first. Oh, just you. Just you first. Yeah, first first and last will be you. I can't wait to see the smoke. It's going to be My nipples got hard thinking about it. Ooh. <laughs> Post that on Pornhub. Mm-hmm. Yes. So, Richard Ryan Rose, Jeff Thompson, both have new releases about to drop. For Richard, it is Wild Eyed Southern Boys 3 Dead Cold War. Oh, by the way, everybody, I'm rocking the original cover for the mm-hmm. first Wild Eyed mm-hmm. Southern Boys. Don't think I ain't a fan because I was a fan before <laughs> I was a friend. So, y'all can all kiss my ass. Listen, when this next book drops, I expect nothing but greatness because the first two were nothing but greatness. So, Richard, let's kick this party off. We're going to start with you by the second half. We're rolling into a world of nothing but total epic mayhem. Dude, and Richard. Give, us a, give us a little, yeah, looky, 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 looky. I'd yeah, show you my copies yeah. of his books, but, you know. Yeah, stroke. yeah, you might stroke out going to get them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So tell us a little bit about the journey, man, that you're finishing your third book, dude. I met you when you had just finished your first book, man. What's it been like? How's it going? Oh, man. I mean, it's been a, uh, it's been a journey. That's a good way to put it. You know, that's, um, you know, it's been a long time coming and I apologize to the fans that had to wait so long. Uh, yeah, but I mean, I'm averaging one book a year, so this book is coming out a little less than a year after the Rougarou War, so it's not really that bad by comparison, but... Uh, fans are the greedy. writer. <laughs> yeah, so the, the writer. The fans were like, they... dude, what's up? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah I mean, I, yeah, like the Rougarou War was originally going to be like a backstory of uh, what's now book three, and, you know, it's going to be combined, but right now... <laughs> You know, if, if I were to put all of Rougarou War into what I've written uh, on uh, on Dead Cold War, I mean, we'd be looking at about two hundred thousand words, and that's just that's too long, Ooh. if you ask me. So, I wow, the War War and Peace, the damn thing. Yeah, yeah. No kidding. the first book was one hundred seventy thousand like words. And... Say, uh, Age of Almost Special, like Jack said earlier. Yeah, because he <laughs> yeah, Aiden held up a book that was like that thick. It was like, yep, that's an Angel Ramon special right there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So I didn't. I didn't want to make it. You know, I didn't want to keep the, you know, keep the readers waiting too long. So I, yeah, I threw out the the Rigaroo War as a uh, backstory. Originally going to be a novella, but it ended up being a a full length book, much smaller than the than the first one. But uh, 
you know, this one uh, coming up, the Dead Cold War, it's going to be more in comparison to the first book. It's it's uh, much longer than the Rougarou War, but not quite as long as the first book. But Now, what's the proper order to read those in? Okay, that's a good question. I'm glad you asked that, Jeff, because uh, everything ties in. Okay, so if you've read my first book, at least, you'll see that there's, uh, there's side stories, there's back stories, and they all just somehow managed to tie into each other at the end. Um, so same goes for the Rigory War. So Rigory War is a prequel. It goes back 100 years, or uh, 120 years uh, before the first book, but it gives some very pertinent information it, it, it explains some things mentioned in the first book and, uh, you know, gives you the backstory of uh, uh, Preacher Cody and uh, and and then a young younger version of Papal, Jedediah Boreth. That was so cool. Uh, that was, that was so backstory. cool. But it also, the, the thing about Rougarou War, it has some of the same villains that you're going to see in that Cold War. And there's, it directly, it ties directly into dead cold war 120 some odd years later so you're going to see some of these uh villains return in the third book that you saw in the second book and some Hell new villains yeah. some new villains will be introduced as you'll see on my banner here oh yeah, yeah you see Sweet. you see that that's... sexy guy there yeah you gotta oh, watch yeah. out yeah that's watch out for this guy <laughs> y'all know who that is <laughs> The Baron's in the building. Yeah. Hey, a uh, little behind the scenes, just to <laughs> let y'all know, uh, me and Richard were texting this morning, and he was being held hostage by a Rougarou. All right, if that's what a Rougarou <laughs> looks like, they're going to kill me every time because that's just too cute. I'm going to be just like, come here with your little... You know, like, I'm done. <laughs> I have no shot. <laughs> yeah, I need to slide in a, a lab -a I got a black lab named Maggie. That's what he's talking about, but I uh, need to slap... slap. Slide in a labaru at some point in the story, I guess. But is that the theme? You throw a roo to it. Can I be a Danaru? Oh, that's <laughs> weird. Is, is that? I, guess, you know, I do have some a uh, couple of dobaroos, and I'll I'll leave it at that. <laughs> is that mm. is that is that anything like a labradoodle? <clears throat> oh no, that, nothing is more evil than a labradoodle. I mean, why that's would you take such yeah. a beautiful? breed of dog a perfect breed of dog like a labrador retriever and combine it with a spawn of satan known as a poodle it's a just poodle unnatural, oh. it's unnatural. Oh. Yeah, i've been no. thinking I've, I've been thinking about combining a uh a pit bull and a chihuahua having a pit wah but you might as well just have a panther in your backyard i mean that's <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you imagine it's like mid-size oh, but it could actually jump oh, on top of the fence and eliminate an entire battalion i mean like it would oh, just Jack. shred oh, domino. make domino yeah. to, to spawn or something like that uh, that Nothing definitely there. sounds like a military experiment if you ask me a chihuahua and a, and a pit mm -mm. Mm, that's deadly. That's, deadly. that's, a, that's so, a big yappy dog. <laughs> yeah. So now, obviously, as everybody can see, that has uh, been involved in the early days when this all began, we got new art back here. Mm -hmm. uh, what happened here, man? What's going on? Look at that with that bad rougarou coming over the top. I mean, it's yeah. dude, this I know. Is, it's this is terrifying. Gorgeous, man. What happened? Well, I, I went to uh, I went by a recommendation uh, from some guys that. Uh, see Derek Miller. He, I think he's the one that uh, recommended him to me. We were at Texas AuthorCon last year, and it's just one of those things I've just been meaning to reach out to, and just you know kept putting it off. And finally, I decided, you know, I'm gonna reach out to this guy and see if he can help me out because uh, the original covers, I figured that's the only thing I could do is because you know, it's not like I can get uh, actual Sasquatches to model. Yeah, mm -hmm. model for Jeff. Uh, Jeff was available. Jeff, yeah. Jeff, Jeff was available. <laughs> yeah, but I just shaved, so true. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I mean, you know, these uh, you know, they were pretty cartoony. I mean, I, I love the original cover that I had for Wild Outside yeah. the Boys with all this, the violence. Yeah, this is the controversial cover right here. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is the uh, you can't do Amazon ads with these covers. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's so horrible. Amazing. It's going to wreck society, you know, seeing which, that. Which I don't understand because, I mean, I hope you don't take offense, but it is pretty comic book looking. It the is. The original. It is. 
Mm-hmm. And, you know, I love it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I love it. I mean, I, I, I'm like he said, it, it's, it's, it's a beautiful cover. You know, I mean, it, it feels good. Like, for sure. And, and maybe part of it's maybe part of it's because we love comic books. You know, so we see well, something that's comic book looking, then <laughs> we just love it. I mean, well, this, I, is a, this is the other book, uh, which is other book. Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I love this cover. I like the cover too, but compared to this, look at that. Exactly. Yeah. Oh, this is going to grab a lot of attention. You know? I mean, yeah. No. Well, yeah. I was telling Richard earlier because, um, you know, we got the Bigfoot Festival coming up in May. And I'm like, dude, you put those banners up right there. I'm going to be in sales mode like a son bitch. Like, <laughs> I don't think you're going to look to. People are just going to grab it. They're going to, I guess, I mean, they're going to flock mm-hmm. over there. They're just yeah. going to come over, if nothing else, to see. And that's how I got so many of them last year is they would see the shirts mm-hmm. hanging. They'd come over to look at the shirts, and then I'm like, oh, hey, uh, got books over here. Bam. Will the author yeah. sign it? Richard, get over here. Yeah, because <laughs> I didn't I didn't have anything like this last time at the Bigfoot Festival, so this is going to be a, a it's gonna be an huge. eye catcher. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah, and just having Jack on one of these, you know, that that's oh, that's going to sell all of them right there. That's a that's, chick magnet. Yeah, that's going right to sell a nine with Jack on it, it. It's done right here. Yeah. Sex, and then, then when he can say he's actually right there, I could be like, yeah, for sale. Yeah, they, Jack. <laughs> okay, like, yeah. listen, Jack. They're going to say, "Oh my God, that's you on the cover," and they're going to look at you, and they're going to look at the cover, and like, "I'm not buying it." <laughs> I mean, so, well, I lost some weight. Okay, I lost some yeah. weight. Damn it. As opposed to Rue, who looks just exactly like me. You know, he's based it, totally hundred percent. I, I, I just that's just me in the same clothes. I modeled for this picture. Okay, so <laughs> well, well, see, and here's my thing. I'm so twenty five years fact, ago. I'm so honored by the ago. fact that the man that wrote a book that has himself semi sorta based on the main character is going to actually write his main character getting his ass beat by my skinny ass that's just (laughs) fucking great i love that we got a couple of people watching we got kristen vincent what is up that's an awesome here i will say oh i will say here these two guys will be going at it in book three there will be a major throwdown between these two now who wins we'll have to see Teaser. No, I, it's not going to be an easy fight for Rue. I'll give it that. You're a teaser. I got one quick question, and it's kind of jumping, right. but okay. You know, I've been waiting for book three. <laughs> yeah, it's actually stroked out, and it's still not out. <laughs> and, uh, so, am fault. I going to be alive for fault. book four, Talk Richard? <laughs> You know, Play the I'm getting guilt older. card. <laughs> Play the guilt card. I can. This is now, fandom it's at its finest. <laughs> well, I now can't help I feel it. Like they are good POS. stories. What's that, well, thank you. Richard? Thank you. I appreciate it. Now that I feel like a total POS, you know. I just... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Dungeon, damn, damn. Wow, you can make it up by, you know, some discount T-shirts. Yeah, I'm already sending I'm you two free books out of sympathy. Yeah, you bastard. Oh, I feel yeah. the illness <laughs> coming again. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, All right, now, uh, here's my big thing. Uh, have you already started on some level, now that you are, you're really, truly at the finish line for book three, mm-hmm. have you already started thinking about book four yet? Oh, yeah. I mean, I, I've got the story. The, the good thing about book four, the it, it, it's not as much of a work in progress as uh, book three was because, you know, <laughs> I had, just like book one, I started out with a, a beginning. I started out with how I wanted to end. I started out with a few things that happened in between. Getting to those things that happened in between. That's the pain in the ass. That's the pain in the ass to get to. You're like, how am I going to make this happen? This has to happen, but how am I going to get there? So, I mean, mm-hmm. it, it, it's... Uh, Have you had to go back and um, literally rewrite early chapters just to get the new thought to, to work out? I mean, is that something question. everybody does? But I'm you know the way your books yeah. are richard i can just imagine going god this sounds great now i have to rewrite the whole fucking book <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> yeah no it, it it's um i did a lot of uh revamping to the first two books yeah you know, when i went back for my second third run through and uh this one you know it, it, there's there are going to be a few things going to add some more color to as I'm going through the editing process and add a few things, but uh, I'm pretty happy with the story. And, you know, it's my third book. I'm getting better at what I'm, I'm getting better at it on the writing side. 
you know, it's just something that you get better at as you go along, you know, and, and, uh, so I'm not having to reinvent the wheel as much, but, uh-huh. uh, Right now, I'm kind of killing two birds with one stone. I've got a new ed- a new editor, and mm. as I'm finishing the chapters the way I want them to be done, I'm sending those chapters to uh, to the editor for her to go ahead and start her work her magic on it with the grammar and everything. And uh, so we're we're a little over halfway through the editing process. So uh, we should be ready to published by mid-month no no later than that oh right, well now here's my question I, it, it was what you just said that made me think of it grammar mm-hmm. when you are a southern writer writing <laughs> a southern novel yeah how does with grammar southern work? dialogue i mean how does that actually work i mean even for angel you know writing you know if he used to write a puerto rican character the damn grammar police are going to be like, no, you don't speak that way. So how, how did you get around that? Or how does your editor work with that? I mean, you just keep it realistic. I mean, when, when I, you know, you know, I let the editor know, look, these are Southern characters. So some of the English is not going to be correct. Okay. And, you know, Grammarly is going to pick it up. You know, the, if you say I'm gonna, you know, Grammarly say going to, well, you can mm-hmm. dismiss that, you know, ignore, okay. ignore. So I hit the ignore or dismiss button a lot with grammar. <laughs> yeah. All of that. <laughs> I will say, I mean, being a fan of the freaking series, oh, you had to been just tap, nope, tap, nope, tap, nope, nope, nope. nope. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't is a word down south, okay? Stop Damn it, Skippy. And hey, <laughs> and Ain't actually <laughs> pops up on my predictive text now. I type A-I, it automatically says Ain't. I'm like, yep, <laughs> click. <laughs> you southernized grammary? Well, summer, uh, so, uh, Facebook. Their uh, predictive text. Oh, okay. I've totally freaking country fied that some bitch. <laughs> it even knows some bitch. S U M B I T C H. It knows the word now. Mm-hmm. I taught it. <laughs> You're welcome. So anyway, Richard, are you more um, of a? Do you like to plan your story out to where you actually, you know, you have all your your characters, you have a, like a bio, and you do that for your new ones, and then you actually plan out what's going to happen. Uh, mm. just to kind of run by or do you like fuck it i'm just gonna write it as it goes w- what's your preferred method well, it's kind of all the above but more towards the <laughs> fuck it i'm gonna write it as it goes side you know i mean I, I do have some prior planning i don't i do storyboard my my books but i oh, do okay. that after the okay. first draft is done um oh so you wait till you actually just sit and just make it up as you go along and then you go back and go okay this okay this works i'll keep this this doesn't mm-hmm. work i'll get rid of that i'll keep this yeah Holy change shit. this I- take that away add this yeah but i yeah uh, like with uh, the book four that you were asking about uh a majority of that story is already up here in this circus so it's just a matter of me putting it down on paper it's I, i'm not gonna have to figure out as much with book four as i've had to with uh the the previous books because it's not going to be quite as much research required damn he stole my next question ass that's good because i i got another one he just he he was just explaining my last question and all of a sudden boom so richard you just wrote a chapter you fucking love it and you're Mm -hmm. continuing on with the book and now you're going back through your first read back like you know i don't know how you do it for me it's like i got six chapters done i'll actually go back but you ever have a chapter that you're like fuck that is art now i have to get rid of it does that happen to you and and do you do it or do you just revamp it do you feel bad about it uh i don't know if i've ever really gotten well <clears throat> i will say i have written a chapter that i absolutely loved and uh it was hilarious and the problem was it involved uh disney Disney World. Oh, yeah. And, copyrights yeah. to get you in trouble. Yeah, and I and you know they have a team of lawyers. They have a whole legal team oh, that goes yeah. after people like that. So do not fuck with Disney. Mm-mm. Nope, nope. Yeah. You can't. You can't just countryize them saying Disney. No, <laughs> no. I mean, I actually, I, I, I sent them the chapter because it, it was a whole chapter involved in Disney World. Uh, for book three that uh you know, i sent it to disney to get approved to see if they would approve for me to do it and not sue me for it and they said no mm-hmm. and you know i don't even know if they read the chapter they probably read the first few paragraphs like nope nope can't do that 
If we're no, not making he's... money off of it, then you can't. You can't. You killed it. three kids and a dog. No way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, he, he'd never kill a dog. He wouldn't do that. There's no, no. way. But hey, I'm just gonna say because I feel like you know certain ones of us have special privileges. If you still have copies of what you were gonna write, we'd sure like to see those. Yeah, uh, actually, I think I thought I sent that to you, Jack. I may have. Uh, I think actually, greedy. no, I, I just may have forgotten because hell, I. God, I can, so I can resend on. it. I can resend it. Hell yeah, because I, I want to reread it. Definitely want to reread yeah, that. I certainly can't publish it. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm retired. I'd like to keep my retirement check, but yeah. hell yeah, damn. Yeah. Yeah. No, <laughs> you could. You just have to change the name of the park. Or, I could. or keep it the mystery so that everybody, all your fans are always like, I wonder what that lost chapter of Disney World was all about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, or you yeah, could just call not... it call it Dizzy Land. Mm-hmm. Got I a mean, lot of I, spinning thing. I'm really happy with the revamp chapter that I I, I had to just take it in a different direction, and uh, it's still a great, it's still a good chapter. I'm still real happy with the chapter, but the chapter I have with the Disney uh, theme on it and everything was hilarious. I mean, it was <laughs> probably some of my best writing, and I can't publish it. It sucks. Yeah. That yeah. sucks. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I totally understand. Damn. So now, as you continue forward, man, what have you thought of even attempting to go ahead and like, go into the early stages of, say, propositioning Hollywood to try to get something made out of the uh, Wild Eyed Southern Boys? Maybe a uh, even if it's animated, you know, because I think it'd be cool, freaking animated with the right art. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, uh, yeah. I'm just saying, you know, we got art here. <laughs> um, have Have you even thought about that yet? Uh, well, I mean, the thoughts crossed my mind, but, uh, you know, I haven't really thought about reaching out to anyone just yet. I would like to get this fourth book done uh, because it, here's the deal. I mean, with the fourth book, I'll have a full story finally. Mm-hmm. I mean, uh the full i could end wild eyed southern boys with this next book and end on a wow. great note and go on to something else if i want to um and really it's just going to depend on how well the book is doing you know because you know i'm about to put out my very first sequel and uh, that's going to be a you know it's, it's going to be kind of a make or break thing you know i mean if, if it's well received and i i'm pretty sure it will be i mean if you like the first two books, I, I'm confident you're going to love the, the 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 third book because I'm I'm real happy with the story myself. But uh, you know, there there again, I can love it all I want, but the readers <laughs> are the ones who really make yeah, choose exactly. how well it's going to do. So uh, to pay us. funny so how that good. works. Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, <laughs> so I mean, uh, I I can continue Wild Eyed Southern Boys after the fourth book. There will be a fourth book, it's, which it's, I after. want. I want you to be like. Uh, we're talking zombie fallout, Guardians of the Apocalypse, uh, Adrian's Undead Diary level. I want this some bitch to go and go and go and go. I, my world yeah. will be darker without Ruin Buford in it. I'm just saying, you know, and everybody well, else, all the characters, Dixie, for fuck's sake, Dixie, come on, mm-hmm. man. There will be, I mean, you know, Ruin Buford are gone, they're not going anywhere, uh, as far as away. Uh, even if I end Wild Eyed Southern Boys with book four, I'm, I'm, I will be starting a new series at Ruin Buford will be the central characters for. So more to come on that. But uh, I do. Um, Says I, with a knowing face. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know about it. But I mean, I have uh, I have ideas for future Wild Eyed Southern Boys books. So I can keep going with the series or I can end it in the fourth. It just depends on depends on the readers. When and see, my thing is, as long as we keep the readers, like you said, depends on the readers. Mm-hmm. What I want to see is more involvement from some of the other cryptids because you tease them in book one, you know, they're mm-hmm. there. We yeah. meet them, they literally speak to the characters. And I'm like, Brew, Buford, and Mothman squaring off against, you know, <laughs> like this mm-hmm. big battle sequence, you know, like I, I want that, you know, as a fan, I want that. Well, you're you know, not gonna and, be and disappointed. It, you're not gonna be disappointed. I can see wait. that. Oh, <laughs> you know, it's gonna be so good. Richard, oh, I can Lord. see a nice deal with Pornhub. Wild <laughs> Eyes Other Boys, <laughs> the porno. It, it, it does sound like a good name for a porno, really. <laughs> yeah. <but> <laughs> That's Y'all why it's selling good this. right there. People thought yeah. they were getting a porn book, and then they start reading it. Like, what the fuck? Bigfoot's 
chopping there's somebody's a, there's head the, off with an axe. Yeah, there yeah. is the Fifty Shades of uh, Fifty Shades of Fuzzy <laughs> spinoff that I plan on. So. <laughs> Fifty Shades of Buford. I love that. I love that. I love that. <laughs> no, it, Buford's dad. That'd be better. Oh, alien, <laughs> alien, lesbian, mutant, Sasquatches. <laughs> Damn, okay. that's a lot yeah. to say. See, uh, for let, let me make note at, for all you people <laughs> sitting at home watching this right now that don't write. This is what it's like when you hang out with writers because they're insane. They're all insane, and they have the craziest of ideas. And you're fortunate that not all of them make it into print. Just saying. <laughs> So, you know, maybe Yikes. when I have the fourth book out to answer your question, maybe when the, I have the fourth book out and have a full story, then I might, you know, I, I, don't, I have no idea where to start when it comes to getting something like that on film. There's authors that are way more successful and, you know, way better than me that are, still don't have anything on film yet. But. You yeah, need well, see, an agent. You huh? need to get an agent for that. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 And the unless, thing is, unless my, you've got industry contacts. <laughs> if, you, if you don't, yeah. So, yeah, I'm sure yeah. Richard. Just covered if you up don't know, those. if you don't know Brad and you know, Glenn, then you're pretty well screwed. You yeah. I call my I buddy. Think he would. I would think he, you would at least know Chuck. I mean, Chuck you Norris. and Chuck Norris got to be tight, you know, like well, yeah. And shit we were both meet. Air Force security forces, by the way. Me and Chuck. Oh, Norris, look at so that. We have some common ground. Yeah. Well, I damn. But, I mean, my thing is, I don't think you necessarily have to be um, a well-known name to get something made into a movie, because we see it all the time, like, constantly. We see it. Like, I've never heard of this person. I don't know where this movie came from. But I can't help but think if someone gets that script or screenplay or whatever you have to write in front of them, and they actually read it, and they see the the interaction between the characters, they see the plot, they see what's going on. Dude, that has got to be made into something because that doesn't exist. Wild-eyed Southern boys, I can't find it. I've looked for it. Like this buddy thing, Harry and the Hendersons is the closest thing I can come to a Bigfoot being friends with people. Yeah. you got them the in. Red, attack of the Redneck Zombies. Is that one? Is that a real thing? That's a real thing. It is. It is. Not, not, okay, not the same story, though. Not the same story. No. no. I was going to say <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Totally yeah. different. Totally but different. But it's an example. Yeah. So, all right. So, uh, what are your future plans right now? Because we know you got the Bigfoot Festival coming up. So, we're going to have a cool tent with them badass banners behind it. Uh, do you have any other plans uh, for events? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've got, I've signed up for, I think, about six events so far for this year. I'm going, I'll be April 1st. I'll be at the Encounter, Encounter Quest in uh, Hamlet, North Carolina. And I'll also be up there with uh, the, uh, the Cryptids of the Corn Cast. They're going to, they're going to be there nice. as well. Nice. Yeah. So I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting those guys. And um, hell yeah, they're cool yeah. as hell. Yeah. And, uh, so yeah, I'll be I'll be there on April first and uh, the Bigfoot Festival in Townsend. Uh, the Bigfoot Festival that they made since you know my book came out, you know, mm -hmm. so popular. Yeah, they, they, they they made the festival for the book. They made a festival in Townsend, Tennessee, at the setting of my book. So yeah, well, actually, well, yeah, that's not true, but it would be cooler if it was. But it will be before <laughs> it's all said and done. We will I mean, rule the world. As soon as I wrote the first draft for Wild Out Southern Boys that year, they came out with the Bigfoot Festival. So I went and visited, and like we're going to be back next year, and we were, and it was very, uh, it was a very successful day. But counting them got, off in fives. Mm -hmm, Western North Carolina Bigfoot Festival in uh, uh, the two weeks after that in May. I don't have anything lined up for June yet. But uh, July, I've got the Texas Alphacon, then the uh, Smoky Mountain Bigfoot Conference in Gatlinburg. Ooh. And uh, I also have Smoky Mountain Terror in Gatlinburg uh, in September. Crap, am I missing something? I know I've got more than that. But yeah, that, that, that's what I have lined up so far, but there's going to be more. Sounds like somebody went into retirement and got busier. 
Yep. Just exactly. saying. Exactly. You know, I want to go. You know. I want to go back in the military and get some rest. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy being an author. Oh, a quick shout out to Anthony Castro who said, "I love knowing people as crazy as me." The Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, yep, you the in the group on that right here. And um, by the way, I will be trying to get Anthony scheduled for an appearance on this show here in the yeah, near future. I, I like I said, talk to him. Yeah, yeah I've, got a, I've got a pretty empty slate coming forward. So, uh, Anthony. Let's get him on here. Yeah, keep your eye out because I'll be coming. I want to talk about that bad bunny of his. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And if we can get a Bigfoot yeah, worked into that thing. Yeah. I mean, just the, fa just, just the wabbit, fact yeah. that he's got an obsession with animals puts him on the show. Oh, no, wait. That's yep. the other show. Uh, <laughs> shut up, Dan. I like uh, this. Get off me. Yeah. Hey, fuck off, go boy. <laughs> mm, yeah, stroke out, fucker. But hey, I'm not the only one on here who's got a new book coming out. No, he is not. No, and we not. are going to move on now to the extra guest we have this week, who is also acting as director for the show and is one of my favorite people in the whole fucking wide world. Jeff freaking Thompson. There you are, you sexy beast. Got the shades rocking, looking all good. Mr. Hey, author Jerry. of the Guardians of the Apocalypse yep. series. One of my favorite. If you just need a damn good laugh, scream bloody cheerleader. He's got mm. demon fog. <laughs> He's got what we're talking about today. Epic fucking mayhem. Hey, Jeff. Hey, hey. The book that I die in multiple times. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, you definitely do that. We, he made sure that happened. That was already written in the contract. Have any of us not been killed in his book yet? I think everybody uh, on, I, I on the show is no, <laughs> Everybody here has been. Yeah, I almost okay. raised my hand because I'm technically in it, but then I went, uh, yeah, no, you were the first motherfucker dead. So, yeah, guess, you're, no. you're one of the yeah. few that got resurrected, but you ain't alive. Yeah, well, yeah, I mean, no, well, Jeff Thompson, it. God rest his soul, he is also uh, a victim in my next book. So, yep. yeah, yeah you died. You died pretty spectacularly, Richard. Oh, you do too. Oh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> this is the mutual admiration society yep. amongst authors. This is what it looks like. You're no, not like, this is the oh, passive aggressive sign. They are yeah. killing each other. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like, it's how oh, much I, I show that. that I care about you. I want to kill you. Yep. Yeah. Oh, Jan Jan Amato of all Princeton, people. <laughs> he, Anthony Cashel Chuck, he's willing to die. Anthony said. Oh, yep. We can kill him. Oh, hell, I'll kill him. In fact, hell, I'll kill him in my uh. You got I'll his kill him blessings. In... I think I already oh, did. I think yeah, I already killed, you killed Castro. Oh, you did? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you did. I have one of the many yet, victims. Though. Yeah, no, no, oh. Congratulations, oh, Anthony. Thank you. Congratulations, Anthony. You already did. <laughs> yeah. Good job. I think, I think I'm up to the total. I'm up to. I think I'm up to eighty. Shoot. That's a hell of a. I don't think it's eighty. It's 80 known people. Yeah. Yeah. That, you know, that, if you add in all the collateral damage. Oh, God. The collateral damage is in the hundreds of thousands. <laughs> yeah. For oh, every yeah. one character that he kills, there's like eight others that get smashed along with him that are just nameless. Yeah. I they haven't have even no tallied. I haven't even tallied the number of people. Oh, you I need to do that. You yeah. I need to do quite that. a few. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Well, okay, cool. Jeff. So, Epic Mayhem. It, um, of course i've been reading them all um but this kind of to me it's like you it's showing your love of 1947 um gangsters um you know just paranormal i mean you literally must have mixed everything you really love all into this one funny and violent fucking storyline he was recently dropped on his head <laughs> repeatedly <laughs> and with just absolute anger <laughs> yeah so and when then epic, they said right so when epic popped into your mind and you decided i'm gonna write this story i mean what was the, what was the point you're all like i think i got something really good it's gonna be a one and done and now we're on book three with four being written <laughs> so tell me well first i came up with the title Epic Mayhem. And it's like, damn, that's a good title. <laughs> I need to do something with that. <laughs> so I started, you know, thinking about it. Epic Mayhem. 
what would that be? And then it kind of led into those great 80s action movies, which are all about epic battles and chaos and bloodshed and things and totally, up. Totally yeah. things that just can't possibly happen. But do. <laughs> right. Yeah, you know, pretty much. And then every now and then, something blows up for no reason. <clears throat> It just happens. It just happens. Yeah. It, it seems like it must be the easiest story to write to me. Um, well, it is and it isn't. Um, the, the details are pretty easy. All you got to do is, you know, think of any of a hundred different action movies you've watched or horror movies you've watched and yeah, there's the details right there you've got hundreds of examples but tying them all together and having them make sense that's a little bit more difficult true true so um shit i just had this great question well i'll go with this then while you think you're a great question okay one of the most fun things I have gotten to do since uh, you, you know, threatened me with a big stick um, to start writing was writing the prologue for Epic Man 4 because I wanted it to sound like a Jeff Thompson production. It needed to feel like an Epic Mayhem. And damn it, man, that was so much fun to write because you, you could kind of be loose with reality. You could kind of just make things ridiculous like off the wall like are you kidding me did that really just happen yeah, and anything I goes that. and i and to get to write that it was just like it was so easy like i was telling angel during his show earlier it took me like an hour hour and a half and i had that no i take that back that one actually took me about two and a half hours it was domino it took me about an hour hour and a half but that one, it didn't take me more than like a couple hours or so to get the whole thing down. Now, I went back and did stuff. But aside from that, to get that thing down, because it was so much fun to write. Do you have that same amount of fun as oh, you're yeah. just writing this? Oh, yeah. Uh, I mean, it's, well, that's how you have to approach this kind of story. Because that's what it was. I mean, these, these action movies. You can't take them seriously. You can't, but they're fun. Right. You know, you, 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 you watch them as pure escapist entertainment. Suspension of disbelief. Well, you look at something like Machete. Oh, yeah. The, the Robert <laughs> Rodriguez. You know, throwing guts up into the air, having them catch in a helicopter propeller. And drag the body up. <laughs> uh, he also used he used when, intestines as a rappel rope. That was awesome. I yeah, love it. That was good. Yeah. yeah. Things that would <laughs> never happen in real life. But you when you see them on screen, they're awesome. It's just like you got it doesn't matter if it's impossible. So what? It's so hot. now one of the oh go ahead, somebody was about to say something. No, no, go ahead, Jack. Go oh, with it. Okay, so now you went with the whole fans thing. We've discussed it before. We've talked about the releases uh, for the Epic Mayhem series. But you're up to what? You said like 80, 80 plus possibly with all the so collateral there, damage yeah. and all that. Oh, yeah. Um, what made you decide that you wanted to do that? <clears throat> Why did you decide, hey, I want to just like let people throw their name in the hat and I'm going to yeah. kill the shit out. Well, I'm going to get a list of volunteers. Well, mm -hmm. to to a lesser degree, um, it's kind of traditional within our circle. You know, zombie books, horror books. Um, as an indie author, it's all about word of mouth. That's 90% of our advertisement is word of mouth. Okay. Where do you get those mouths from? Mm, the readership. Brilliant. You know, how mm -hmm. do you engage the readership? You get you get, you know, a fan 
that's that's really supporting you. You want to give them something. Right. Okay, you're a horror writer. You write zombie fiction. You write Sasquatches. What can you give them? A meaningless and violent death. <laughs> you are a sick man, and I love it. He's yep. twisted, man. He Absolutely. is twisted, but we love him for that. Well, yeah, but I mean, you, you guys were there. The moment I opened it up for volunteers, it, it just... Like, it me, 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 me. Kill me. <laughs> yeah, okay. I, we've literally gotten submissions in later books from people that you've already killed. And want to like, die again. It's, it's like, yeah, okay. I want to go again. We that was a fun ride. Kill you. me again. You know, what the hell? Well, I remember, I remember when Jeff brought this up in one of our little feeds. You know, me and Jack were the first one to put hands up. Kill us. We want to die. <laughs> You're right. That's, that's what everybody does. It, it's kind of a, I don't know. It, it is if as a fan, it did feel like a reward. It's like, holy shit, I'm, you know, he's going to kill me needlessly and senselessly by name in one of his books. You know, so that's a pretty brilliant idea, actually. Oh, and, and for me, my big thing is to, to, to know that I could pick up a physical copy of a book, an actual book, you know, the things we avoided when we were kids. Well, some of us did because, <laughs> you know, it was the library and everything was musty and we didn't want to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> but to know that I'm going to be inside this book forever. If anyone reads this, they're reading my name. That's me. Dude, Friend, that's you cool eternal life. Yeah. Eternal <laughs> life and, and death. Yep. And that's what I tell people when uh, I ask them if I can kill them in something I'm doing. I'm like, dude, I can grant you immortality. Come forth. And, and, and that's what it is forever and ever. Jane Doe, Jim Smith. Jack Childress will always be in that book. It's, it's a so bragging cool. right as a fan. Yes, it and is. I, at work, I even described how I got killed. And they're all like, holy shit, what'd you do to piss him off? <laughs> like, no, that's just <laughs> the way it goes. <laughs> and of course, oh, they're all like, can you get him to kill me too? So I send Jeff a big list mm -hmm. of names. Yep. And he, you know, systematically through the first three books, actually, I think through the fourth, my friends have been getting killed. And every one of them are like, <laughs> of course, now here's where Dan becomes the asshole. They're like, dude, we let me read when I get killed. I'm like, no, you can buy it. <laughs> yeah, thank you. It. There you go. Thank you. Well, I can't give everything away free. It's like, fuck, dude, I bought my own copies. Buy yours. I yep. buy my own copies. <laughs> it's like, come on, it's on Kindle. Yeah. Oh, Fucking three and by, bucks. And, and Anthony Castro just, uh, you said he got epic mayhem book one just now so. awesome. well there i believe if, correct me if i'm wrong jeff there's a sale right now where you can get book one two and three for 99 cents each yep come on this is the time to nail it because yep. once you start book one you're gonna be like i gotta finish i gotta go right into two gotta go right into three where the fuck is book four that's i mean that's how i am when i read you know mm -hmm. hence me always ragging on richard over there yeah, I know. Hey, it's your fault. You wrote a good story. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Well, yeah, but I mean, in Richard's defense and my defense and Angel's defense, mm -hmm. these these things do take some time. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know, but as a fan, nice, we're like, that's I don't want to hear it. Just write. It, it, it would be nice <laughs> if I could just, bleh, and the, the, yeah. but I mean, I could do that, but it would be. A hundred pages of crap. Yeah. And there's I, enough of that out there. Oh yeah, we authors, you know, these are these are our babies. When we write a book, I mean, these are something we put our heart and souls into. And we don't right. want to throw out a, 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 a Yeah, you don't want to throw out a bunch of garbage. Yeah, we don't want to throw out a defective product for our readers to read and make what the, what the, what the hell is this? I'm not gonna read this crap anymore. Right. You know, we, well, we want to do I, yeah, right I totally get that. The three of you, you know. Richard, Jeff, Angel, you all have multiple books out and you have no a idea. fanship because they are good stories and you take the time to make sure that the next installment works, you know? Well, yeah, because our names are on those things, man. Yeah. Well, I mean, trust me, I'm not wearing this T-shirt because I felt like I needed to be friends with a soon to be retired military guy. Uh, I think he is retired. 
Um, well, April he's got first. Cer- he, he's still got it. Yeah, he's still got his ceremony coming in. What? My ceremony's so. Tuesday, and then April first is my official first day of retirement. So really? I'll be at an account. I'll be at an account about quest. dragging shit out. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Pomp and circumstance, pomp and circumstance. In the Navy, and I'm pretty sure Coast Guard, we get shit done. Boom, boom, done. We're gone. Oh, he's ready to see you leave, Dan. What the hell are you talking about? Get him out of here. That's that was probably actually it's like fuck, hurry him up. Let's get him out of here. Let's move him out now. Richard on the other. Give him whatever he wants. (laughs) Jokes. Yeah, I I I made the mistake of selling my terminal leave. Ooh. Did you? Oh, it was. Oh man, they they tax it yeah. as a capital gain, and you don't get uh, your BAS oh, or BAH. You get raped. Mm-hmm. I you know what I raped. What I found oh, funny taxes. was when I reenlisted, they didn't tax that big old bonus I got. But when I got out and I I sold off some of my terminal leave, yeah, the, I I like wait, why is this so low, man? You know, I got sixty days. I just sold thirty. So mm-hmm. yeah, you you yeah, get raped hey, on sale and leave. Support the troops. <laughs> yeah, they're I'm all like, about I that. Troops support themselves. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Damn. back to Epic Mayhem. We digress. <clears throat> yeah, yes. we do. <laughs> um, I love the pacing of this book. Now um, it's quick. Okay, I like the rest of you. I read a lot of different authors. Some. You can always uh, come book two. You can start to notice a pacing, and as they do more books, you'll you'll notice it. But Jeff has a very distinctive um, pacing to his books. Yes, the Guardians of the uh, Apocalypse. You almost said Galaxy. I, I almost did. did, but I have an excuse. <laughs> I keep wanting to say that too, but <laughs> oh yeah, he's gonna, he gonna blame it on the stroke. Yeah, the I'll blame stroke. everything on that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry it was only three seconds, babe, but I had did have a stroke. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, okay, that had a particular pace, and I don't want to call that one fast-paced. Well, it did get fast-paced, but it was more like build up, build up fast. Slow down, build up, build up. Epic Mayhem really hasn't had much of that. It's been... Go, 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 go. You start off at a, at a fast pace, you know, fast pace walk which goes into a jog and that's where you stay. That's your baseline is you're at a fast paced jog. Now, everything else is a full out run or a sprint Mm -hmm. Um, and moves the story along really well. So was that a a choice, Jeff, to make it like that? I mean, since these are basically at its its center, Epic Mayhem is an homage to those eighties action movies. Because this is a universe where it's all action movie all the time. Arguably one of the best action movies ever made is Raiders of the Lost Ark. Hell yeah. Oh yeah. That movie is nonstop from beginning to end. It does not slow down ever. See, now that you bring it up, I can see the coordination. It doesn't. It's yep. It keeps going. There, there's going. no sit down and reflect on wow that last I mean, assignment even, <laughs> even even the stuff in um the classroom where right. where the girl all, closes her eyes yeah with the eyes says, oh, you. So you get sexy. you get one or two scenes and Boom. then he's jumping out the fucking it's window there. you yeah. know how many times i've had that happen to me as an instructor <laughs> oh, <laughs> at least guys? zero at <laughs> least zero yeah, well, yeah, more than that, but okay. Okay, okay, all right, right, fine, sure, whatever. <laughs> Bragger, Just this motherfucker. I I shit I mean, I'm once. not. I'm not one to toot my own horn or anything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're lucky to get anybody to toot your horn. The hell, you, <laughs> you know, come on. <laughs> that, that that cut deep, Jack. I mean, that cut yeah. deep deeper than you know. Okay. Yeah. Hey, you wrote me, you bastard. You wrote me. <laughs> Okay, so Jeff, I'm I'm sorry I keep going back to Epic Mayhem because if we got to be careful, I'm no, a fanboy I'm about to of both us, of these. I'm, a, I'm about to take us off of the Scream Bloody Cheerleader here in a minute. So, really, thank you. Oh yeah, I was about oh, to yeah. do the same shit, and then I'd be feeling guilty after the show. Um, yeah, yeah, we'll get over the guilt because it's coming. Because I love <laughs> that fucking book. Don't worry, Angel. We'll get to you in a minute. 
<laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. He's I could see it on his face. He's like, I know Dan liked the fucking bacon zombie one. I don't know why he's not bringing it up. <laughs> uh, it's no, coming. It's all good. So I'm not as big as fan as as Jeff is, obviously, of the 1947s type of Americana, let's say. Is that the right word? Um yeah. well, I mean yeah. To me, because it was based on a detective and, you know, a cop. So it was kind of a police. Yeah. I mean, my favorite film noir movies are all those great Humphrey Bogart. I mean, The Big, the, the big Sleep, Maltese mm-hmm. Falcon. Um, Dark Passage. It's they're just great. Key Largo, awesome movies. You did him uh, personally, didn't you? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off! But, um, <laughs> well, the not point that I, old. The point I was getting to was, you know, you put it in this time frame, you put it in the city. Good Nazis. Is, yeah i was getting there jack thank you <laughs> uh you know uh now i lost my train of thought so yeah that point i, just I did made, my Jeff. job yeah you did dickhead <laughs> um no you did a good combination so we got that you got the city where it, even in your dialogue when they're going in between places it seems like there's always something happening in the city <laughs> so we got that then you throw in fucking demons and hellfire. Um, and then you bring in, like Jack said, fucking Nazis. And I get that one the best. Come on. Who doesn't like to fuck with Nazis? Um, and then you wrap it all around the story of the old gods coming back. <laughs> it's like the weirdest mashup you could ever think of. And it works. Yes. It works because you bring it in. And I I brought all this in because the question I have is, how high were you when you fucking made the Wiener Mobile <coughs> to have a, have a have an appearance and an awesome senseless death? Well, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna interrupt him just to say that me and you have both know the reality of that because he talked to us about that. I know. And yeah. yes, he is out of his fucking mind. Well. Given that um, cannabis is legal for recreational use here in Nevada, um, there's a better than evening chance, better than even chance that I was high as a motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, well, it was just when you've killed 80 people. 80. Yeah. 80. And, after a while, you have to start coming up with interesting ways to do it. Mm-hmm. And your answer was to bring in the Wiener Mobile to spice up life, Why which not? was invented, it was a good choice. It, it was, was a real during that choice. year, this, though. This particular, um, this, this particular series of deaths came about because one of the members. The Asylum of Fear group put her name and the names <coughs> of her husband, her kids, and I think her in laws. She wanted them all killed. So it's a family book. So oh, I, yeah. <laughs> so I had to come up with a way. I had to come up with a way to kill them all at once. It was like five or six of them. Yeah, it was, so it was a big six, There's at least six. Yeah, and it so, was pretty freaking spectacular. It was a great death scene for so him, I'm too. Just, I'm, just, I'm just thinking about it. And it's like the I, the image of the Oscar Mayer <laughs> Wienermobile <laughs> came to mind. I'm like, yes. It, you know, when I was reading it, it's, it was funny. Because I could picture this thing coming around the corner, racing down uh-huh. the street, this big fucking hot dog in a bone van, basically. 
Um, and I remember those commercials from when I was a kid. Oh, they yeah. had the Wiener Mobile going all across America, I'm making like appearances. Austin, still Wiener. does. It still does. Does it? Still, it still yeah. yeah. Yeah, they still yeah. do it. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. And, and, and that before. potato truck, the potato truck is a thing mm-hmm. for Idaho yeah. potatoes. I've got pictures of me standing next to both trucks at dip, two different events. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, I have to dig those up. Uh, yeah, I've, been, I've, I've seen the yeah, potato yeah, truck and the wiener mobile. Yeah. yeah, you should post those pictures up. Damn yeah, right. Them. Yeah, I'll dig them up and uh, put them on there. <laughs> so, yeah. I mean, that's that's one of the running things in Epic Mayhem is just shit out of nowhere will pop in there. I mean, there's been people killed by half tracks. I don't, mm-hmm. I've been in any city where short of the military coming through, you ever see a two ton truck coming through, you know, it's not normal, but in the city, that shit's all over the place. Yeah. And then of course, well, everybody fights with Tommy guns. Okay. That's cool. Of course. Tommy guns. Well, yeah, that's, that's it's, it's, cool. it's the 1940s. Gotta have Tommy guns. Come on. They're brutal. I want well, one. Now, let's be right about it now because Jeff don't call them Tommy guns. Thompson, Thompson machine guns. guns. Sub- just him We're patting bringing in the right thing. The, back. the, the Thompson submachine gun. Just blasting yep. bolts. Mm-hmm. Yep. It's a brutal weapon. It's it it's is. got a it's a big what it's a is it a 45 caliber? 45. 45. That 45 round caliber. will put a fucking hole in your body. Oh you yeah. Know, it's not well, like you see other rounds. You, the, you get the, the bullet wound and it's not really yeah. in a hole. That the, the Genesis, the Genesis of 45 is that the military and police used to use the 32, mm-hmm. but mm-hmm. it would it would like bounce off a windshield. So they wanted something with more stopping power. They came up with the 45. Dude, you get hit in the pinky with a 45. <laughs> Your ass is going down. You yeah. ain't got a pinky anymore. Nope. That's it. It's gone. <laughs> and, and half your hand is gone. Mm. Um, and then and then because of um uh ammunition commonality, they switched to nine millimeter and mm-hmm. nine millimeter bounce off windshields again. Bounce off people's skulls too. Even yeah. 40 calibers have known, been known to bounce off people's yeah. skulls. 45 won't. <laughs> no, it just vacates whatever I, it hits. I've yeah. seen it. I've seen a guy shot five times with a nine mil once before. Yeah. And he lived. He was a drug dealer. You know, you can't kill a cockroach, <laughs> but I mean, yeah. Yeah, he lived five times. <laughs> Here's my that's, thing. Why, that's why, cool. why don't we just stick with the 45? Why'd they change? It's because of ammunition commonality. 45 is an American rounder. It was for the most part. Mm-hmm, so right. UN had nine millimeters. That's what the uh what the Luger was, wasn't it? Yeah. Was that was that a seven millimeter? I remember um, like nine sure millimeter the Beretta and yeah, the Beretta, like yeah. You know, the, the military still carries the Berettas uh, with NATO mm-hmm. ball ammunition. Right. Mm-hmm. And uh, law law enforcement, like uh, security forces, MPs, they carry the the, the, the clocks. hollow points. Well, I yeah. mean, they, they carry the Berettas with the hollow points in them. You know, as long as they're stateside, they go overseas. They have to carry the NATO ball ammunition. And, right. Mm. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, it'll it'll ruin your day if you get shots. You know, enough. Oh yeah, yeah, right. yeah. You don't want to get yeah. shot. I don't want to get shot by twenty two. <laughs> Are you kidding me? I, I ain't yeah. trying to get shot. Period. Well, that's what the, that's what the military did when it went from. <laughs> The M1 rifle, which is a 30 odd six, the two two three, yeah, to the M16. Mm-hmm. The M16 was they went there because uh, the M16 was wound soldiers mm-hmm. rather than kill them, meaning that the enemy would then have to use resources. To take care of their wounded. That was the idea. 45, 30 out six. I just kill motherfuckers. Right. Once they're dead, you don't have to worry about yeah. scooping they're, they're them up dead. till the battle's done. Yeah. You got 250 wounded guys. That's a bigger problem. I can well, now, that. Jeff, with uh, writing the Guardian series, you had to deal with a lot of military stuff. 
how much research did you have to actually do into the weaponry? Because you bring up a lot of different <laughs> types of weaponry through that series. Well, if you have it, everything, everything is what the Coast Guard uses. None of the weaponry is, you know, unusual. Okay. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it's standard, standard stuff. Yeah. You well, see, a- the voice, that's what makes it cool is because at least someone reading your books is going to be like, oh, cool. They picked up a nuclear bomb launcher. Nice. You know, they're, they're <laughs> not getting that. They're getting literally what you guys would have had. And that's, yeah. That's, that's one of the things ass. I liked about that series when I started it was because I understood so much of it because, I mean, I brought it up in other shows in the very first book, there mm-hmm. is a lot of orders and Jeff would write out the whole fucking orders and put it in the book. <laughs> yeah. You know, now <laughs> Richard, I know Richard's going to know exactly what I'm saying. You don't want to read them fucking things when they're your orders, much less a book. But <laughs> a warning order, op orders, and all that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you know, yeah. you got a 20 page <laughs> document that says you need to leave this post, go to that post. You know, uh, but the point of it is, is it's it's accurate. So for anybody who's lived that life, it feels like home. So yeah. immediately, as much as I hated reading through it, I'm like, yeah, I fucking get it all. And it, and it's all correct. Yeah. Um, but then you know, he's describing the Sasfrash. I've never been on the, on that ship, but I know of that type of ship. So, I mean, it, you know, he lived on it. <clears throat> he knows every little in and out. Mm-hmm. I was on the Fort Fisher in LSD, uh, not the drug, the ship. Uh, and I knew that one inside <laughs> now. Uh, yeah, I was say, hang on now, hold up. <laughs> Landing yeah. ship dock. Shout out to... Uh, Oh yeah! Shout out to Aiden Cordia. Thank you for watching. He Aiden is watching oh, us right now. The resident uh, archaeologist for the crew. What is up, Aiden? I was hanging out with you not too long ago. Yeah. Who's the man? <coughs> well, <coughs> ladies and gentlemen, is, oh, when, oh. When, well, just real quick, <coughs> when you're writing something like zombies or sasquatches or you know demons that fuck up wiener mobiles. <laughs> <laughs> you you have to base it in as much reality as you can. Mm-hmm. The the yep. details have to be as realistic as you can make them, so that when you start making shit up, the reader will follow you. Yep, right. And you don't get a lot of flack from military folks. Going, oh, and you too. Oh, even yeah, exist. you definitely oh, want to avoid that. Too. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> Yeah. They yeah. will, they will point that shit out. I pick it apart. I don't point it out, but I'll tell you this: when I when I read a book and there's there's talk between military people, I will call you out if it's not correct. Um, I'm not as big on the on the ammunition and guns, but I know enough about it. Going, you got that wrong, buddy. You know, but there are guys that are like, you ruined the whole story because you fucked that little detail up. Yeah, oh, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I yeah. had. I had a typo that misnamed the ammunition, and this guy went off on me. It was a typo. I put, I think I put two o three instead of two two three. Well, that could have saved thousands of lives. You know, (laughs) shit. Two o three is a lot bigger caliber than a two two three. By the way. Yeah, I know. (laughs) Yeah. All right, guys, we have reached the end. Of Damn, this I still new... have so many questions. Good, good. Save we'll do those it again, for right? next week. Yes, we will. <laughs> and um, right. Dan, uh, I'm going to go ahead and throw him out there just for everybody. Um, Dan actually was questioning whether he was supposed to be on this show today or not. Well, after everything that happened, I'm sorry, fucker. You're on this show every fucking week. I need to see your stupid face so I can <laughs> look right. at you and know that you're lazy ass. Okay. I'm you feeling an event coming again. Much. Yeah, get your ass much. on this fucking show, you. No, jerk. it's it. We we changed things up. I, I have a different uh, role, no, so and and that was mine. To... But now I'm like, no, 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 no. Is you're it because I damn ask show. good questions, or I'm just so freaking handsome? A little bit of both. Uh, we got we got to have the eye candy, Dan. We got to have the yeah. eye candy on the little, show. Nobody else going to watch, you know. Ooh. Yes, since mm. Jen isn't here <laughs> and Eliana isn't here. Exactly. So yeah. you're Dan, stuck with Dan, me. You know, so you have to started. bring out 
You're at you least have third. to bring out your feminine side, Dan. Fine. Next week, yep, that's I right. will wear lipstick. I'm tired Ooh. of carrying all the weight, guys. Ooh. I'm just telling you. I'm shit, tired right? of carrying all the weight. With We're tired of trying sixes. to live up to it. <laughs> I was say. Uh, oh. Damn, look at that backdrop. That is a beautiful backdrop. It's oh, amazing. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the Book of Asylum for this week. I'm going to get us out of here so that everybody can go home and go do whatever the hell they need to go do, you know, even if it's like <laughs> chop up a body and bury it in the back lot. Whatever. <laughs> we don't judge. We don't care. Nope. Ladies and gentlemen, my tag team partners in this survivor series match that we just won with impunity and just destroyed our opponents <laughs> jeff thompson angel ramon retro ryan rose and back from damn near death <laughs> dungeon dan ubel Mm-hmm. We'll see y'all next wild. week. I don't know <laughs> who we're going to have on yet, but I'll let you know in the meantime. See you guys then. Love right. y'all. Thanks for watching. Peace out. Take it easy, everyone. <laughs>